All right, what is up ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Q7 video. This one's gonna pertain to you Touareg guys and the Cayenne boys because today we're gonna be doing a full drivetrain service. Now, there's videos for doing the transmission specifically or the diffs, but we're gonna do it all at once because this thing is now officially an off-road rig as you've seen, but we wanna get everything dialed in a little bit here. I was having some problems with the drivetrain off-road and I know this thing doesn't have lockers and is open diffs all around and whatnot, but we just wanna make sure that when we are going off-roading and we're really you know, driving this thing hard in first gear when we're trying to climb up stuff and whatnot that we're not having any downfalls due to old fluid or burnt out fluid. So we're gonna change absolutely everything today. So this one is specifically for you off-road guys because I know a lot of you probably wanna do this. And my Q7 is about to hit 140,000 kilometers which works out to about, I wanna say about 80 to 85,000 miles. So we are getting up there and none of this has ever been serviced. So we're gonna do that today, but we're gonna start number one with the transmission. So let me show you what you need. All right, so as far as tools, you don't need anything super complicated other than one very specific tool. And that would be this guy here. So we'll start with the number one thing that you're gonna need in order to do this service is a fluid transfer pump. Now I will have this exact one linked in the description because this is probably one of the cheapest ones that you can get. You can buy it on ECS. I think this one cost me just under $200 Canadian and it has all the tools and everything you need, but it's a hand pump. So can't really hook a compressor up to it and all the, like all those other fancy ones that you can get. But this one I've done DSGs with. I'm now doing an ASIN with it. It can do pretty much anything that's in a Volkswagen, Audi, or Porsche. It can also do BMW stuff or whatever. So if you want to buy this to make some money off some people by doing some services, this is a really good one to get. We'll get to the consumables as well. We're going to need 10 liters of some form of an ATF that meets the Volkswagen spec down here, which is the VW, if it'll focus, g 055 540 a2 for the eight speed asin 1000 that is in our q7 there's a couple different brands that make atf i got this one because it was the easiest to get just as a whole service kit and then obviously we need our transmission filter this is a hankst one that also comes with our pan gasket so we got those guys there and then we have our hand tools now you don't need anything super fancy like i said biggest thing you're going to need for sure is a extended five millimeter you can also probably use an allen key we'll see we'll try it out when we're under there to get the inner plug out of the drain hole on the oil pan because you have the main plug and then you have the fill plug and you're going to need this to get it out and then you'll also just need another stubby five mil to get the main drain plug out so i've got a whole kit here for Allen sockets. There's the kit if you want it. This is just from Canadian Tire, super cheap thing. This is like $40 Canadian. Probably get that at Harbor Freight. I'm sure Harbor Freight carries it. Next, we've got two sizes of socket wrenches, quarter inch, three eighths, 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, I have a ratcheting one because I'm fancy and it'll make my life a little bit easier and we'll show you when we get under there. Various 10 millimeter sockets to get the oil the oil pan and the filter out of the transmission. So we've got an extended 3 8 a stubby 3 8 and a stubby or a stubby quarter inch. Pry bar or a flathead, I have a short like 12 inch one, perfect size for this. And then various extensions, I'll probably use some other ones when we're in there. So I just have a six inch extension and then also a wobble bit uh, that I've taped up a little bit that you'll probably want to be able to use the wobble, but this just kind of limits its movement. And then obviously a torque wrench to torque everything up. This one only goes to about 30 foot pounds, I think. So this is gonna be the perfect size. Uh, you might have a bigger one that might be able to do the job, but this is gonna be easier to get it underneath the car. So without yapping on anymore, turn you guys around, let's get underneath the Q7. Okay, so we need to start with removing the rear portion of the skid plate at the least. Now you're gonna want your car level. I'm just jacking it up so I can get under here to make my life a little bit easier just to kind of get things started. So when we fill it, we'll make it level, so don't stress. We're gonna need a couple different sizes of some Torx bits here. So I'm just gonna bring everything under and I'm gonna slide under here for you guys. So we're doing this without a lift just to prove for those of you that don't have a lift, you can do this without one. It's not rocket science. My car is also on all terrains right now and we'll talk about those in another video, but not right now. So back ones, these two, both are T30s. There's gonna be a little plate that comes off this guy and we're gonna move along here. We got two more further up, two more T30. Magnetic tray goes a long way here, folks. 
And sticking with the same theme, we got some more T30s. There should be three here. I only have two for some reason, so it's good to know. Get those both out of here. We should be able to slide it off the back. Oh, no, sorry. There is a fourth one up here as well. Hopefully you guys can see. There we go. Transmission pan is exposed and that's this guy right here. So I'll move you guys, put some gloves on and we'll start draining the pan. So now we're gonna grab our five mil and our three quarter inch or three eighths, not three quarter socket wrench. We go ahead and crack the drain plug off. We need a little bit of persuasion. All right. Yeah, not very tight at all. Shouldn't really be. Yep, all right. There we go. She's gonna le leak away for a while. This is probably gonna take, uh, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Oil is a bit hot. I'll let that do its thing. Gonna move the bucket over a little bit. We'll come back once it's done draining and we'll pull out the inner one. And always have a second oil pan or catch pan ready to go. Okay, it's almost out of dribble. So we can probably pull the inner plug out. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our extended five mil and sorry for the, the hammering noise if you can hear it over me. So this is where things are probably gonna get a little bit messy and in all honesty, I probably should have maybe transferred some over to the other one. But anyways, so we're gonna shove this guy up here and we're just gonna twist and it should come out by hand. It's this little green plug I'll show you guys in a second. Yep, this guy right here. We're gonna start flowing a lot faster because we're gonna get through about uh, eight liters in here. And I actually don't know what the capacity of this pan that I've got here is, so things might get interesting in a second. If I washed, quote unquote, the underside of this thing the other day and it's still so dirty. Need to get one of those like hose hookup things that like rolls, you know what I'm talking about? It, like rolls under the car. That dude is good. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, relax. I ain't trying to catch it in the eye here, brother. Clean that guy off too, before we put it back in. Oh damn, I am dripping from my hands big time. All right, I'm gonna get a rag. Hopefully it don't overfill before I come back, or that would be bad. I'll also let you guys know how long roughly this took me when I'm done. It's only been about 20 minutes to this point, I'd say. Probably only gonna take me about an hour, all things considered. Okay, so we're at a little bit of a dribble here, as you can see, so we're gonna go ahead and just put the outer plug back on and I just fucking flung fluid all over my hand. That was dope. Just gonna snug that in by hand. And we're gonna go ahead and get our fluid, our old fluid. Oh no, actually I need to leave this here, don't I? Okay, so 10 mils all the way around the transmission. I honestly would probably, if you have one, just use a DAC DAC or like a electric wrench, electric ratchet. Make your life a lot faster. These aren't very tight. So when you put them back in, they're not gonna be very tight either. So don't reef on them. I'm just gonna go around and loosen these all off. I believe there's 10 of these uh, bolts. Oh, my exhaust is very hot. That's great. Now, theoretically, you shouldn't necessarily have to use the, uh, the ratcheting wrench if you have small little rat fingers like I do, unless you physically can't get it out like I'm having issues with. Oh, there we go. Crack that guy off. Can I go up through the... Oh my god, I can go through the cross brace. I'm an idiot. Just take your time as well. There's, unless you're in a rush to do this, it's, I don't know what the hell that noise was. It really is not rocket science. Am I missing one? What is this? Oh no, I think that's like a locating pin or something. Cause there ain't, ain't nothing there. Okay, we've got them all out. I'm actually gonna take the ones closest to the engine completely out first, just to make life a little bit easier. Actually, let's try it. Whoa, hello. I didn't realize how close the mic was to me. Can we get up in here with an extendo? I don't know. How tight are these? Tighter than my fingers still. Just gonna hang out and uh, close my eyes and undo these bolts. Try my best not to get mad. Now, these ones that are closest to the engine, I would do your absolute best not to drop these on the cross member because I really don't know how difficult it'll be to get them off. There's one. Okay, that might be finger tightable, almost. That's gonna be a two-hand operation to get that one out. Honestly, what do you guys think of the new lav mics? Is it sick? Everything sound a bit better? Do I sound more annoying than I already do? Let me know in the comments. So what I'm doing now and how I'm able to get enough ratchet action on it, I had just have one finger barely touching the shallow socket. And I am still using the 3.8 drive, by the way. I have not switched to the quarter. Nice, okay. 
that one's out and now everything else is gonna be super easy. And just to make me not wanna end my existence, I'm gonna use a dac dac. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. Okay, and then we've got one more up by the downpipe. That is gonna probably take me eight millennia to undo. Oh no, it's finger tight. Nice. And now we have the two left in the back. So these are gonna be the ones that are gonna hold all the fluid. So I'm gonna undo the most angled side, which is gonna be the passenger rear, because I have the driver's front jacked up. So I'm gonna undo that one completely, just so we can get the spillage to come out over yonder. And we're also gonna undo the drain plug again, just so that when it's, uh, it falls down this way, some of it'll come out of the, uh, out of the hole here. So there we go, already got some coming. Who knows, we might get lucky and this might not even need a pry bar to come off. Let's give it a go. No, I think it's gonna need a pry bar. A flat head or whatever you want to use. Okay, give me two seconds here. Then we'll go grab one. Okie dokie. Oh, don't really know. Oh, there we go. I promise this is the longest part of the process. Everything else is so easy. I think we're good to just to drop the whole pan now. I'm gonna leave a couple threads in just so I can get the front of the pan loose. Oh man, we're just gonna go for it. Fuck it. I wasn't ready, fuck. Ooh. Okay, let's grab some of this and another one. Why do I feel like I'm missing one? Even though I know I'm not, unless I totally am, which is entirely plausible. Am I missing one? It doesn't feel like a bolt. Oh, it totally is. Now, we can take the, the last one out. That was my bad. Oh, I almost Kobe'd it. Okay, whoa! Now, very carefully, drain the rest of the fluid into the, whoa, into the pan. Well, there goes my hat. And then, we're going to carefully balance the pan there. Now, we have to pull the transmission filter out, which is another lovely fun part, because it's gonna leak even more fluid everywhere. So, if I could find the drain plug. Actually, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, pull that guy out too. Now I'd keep the bolt separate for the oil filter, for the trans filter, because it is, they are not the same bolts as the uh, oil pan. They're slightly shorter. Four 10 mils, all on different corners. I'm probably gonna see some dribblage in a second here as the O-ring releases and such. I'm gonna hold the oil filter in. Yeah, there you go. Oh, the transmission is hot. The oil, however, is not, which is okay. Filter is free, and here we go. So you're gonna need to pop that guy out. And the O-ring did not come with it. That is okay. Okay, we're gonna throw that in our oil pan here. I'm gonna do a quick uh, clean up, and we'll show you what to do next. So we will be back in a second. Okay, so now we're gonna quickly do a little bit of pan cleanup, and we're gonna deal with our filter and whatnot. I'm gonna throw some gloves on here because it's gonna get messy. Now, luckily for us, the new oil filter comes in this little plastic bag that's fully sealed, so we're gonna cut it open and reuse it here by putting the old oil filter inside to keep things a little bit, uh, a little bit cleaner here. Pull our new one out, move that to the side, and we're gonna go ahead and just immediately throw our old one in. It's drained pretty well. Try not to get the outside of the bag oily. And we're just gonna immediately go ahead and throw that in the new filter box that that came in, just to double up. Beauty. So now we're gonna go ahead and clean out the bottom of the pan. We're gonna quickly have a look at our magnets there. They're pretty clean. Not really a whole lot of uh, anything on there, but I could be wrong. So let me just pull one of those bad boys off there. Okay, yep. Yeah, I was definitely wrong. They're a bit sludged. I don't know if you can really see how caked it was on the one side, but that is... You know what, for 130,000 kilometers though, or 140, I have seen... Well, I've never really seen the inside of one of these transmissions before, but I'm definitely sure there's probably been worse. You guys can let me know. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull all of the magnets out of here and just kind of wipe them down. Stick them off to the side here. Just put them on the new new filter. And then we're just gonna wipe down the inside of the transmission. We're not going to uh, clean it with anything because we just don't want to contaminate 
any of the new fluid we're about to put in there. Um, you could use brake clean and then just like, just really clean and dry the shit out of it, but that's kind of up to you, dealer's choice, I would say. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and just kind of mop up all the residual that's in the bottom of this thing. Then I'm also gonna go grab a lint-free towel and just wipe it all down just to make sure we don't have any little threads coming off these rags that end up in here. And then we should be good to go. Pretty clean, not bad. Throw our magnets back in there in a second. But we're also gonna go ahead and we'll pull the gasket off here. So just stand by, give me two seconds. Um, we're gonna put it in the same box as the filter. So the gasket is fit onto the pan. So it's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get it off, so just take your time. Go, hold the gasket off. And go huck this in that same box. And go ahead and throw our magnets back in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and throw our gasket on. That'd be so hurt if it was the wrong gasket. And you don't have to go ahead and like push it on super hard because obviously torquing down the bolts on the uh, on the oil pan is gonna do a lot of that for you, but you just wanna make sure that it's all lined up. And there we go. So let's get back under the car and throw this guy on and also install our new filter. Well, I guess we gotta start with that. So I'll show you how to do that. Go ahead and start by putting the filter in. I'm gonna need a couple of uh, couple of rags here because I know the uh, everything is gonna be covered in transmission fluid, including me, I'm sure, sooner than later. Okay, so most important thing about O-rings, lube. We're just gonna take some of the old Tranny fluid here. We're gonna lube that O-ring up nice and good. I'm sure some of you are experts at lube. And then we're gonna go ahead, get that guy up in there, give him a little push. And he should kind of click in. I don't know if you guys heard it like click in, but I'm gonna go ahead and start a couple of the bolts. And we're not gonna fully just yeet these in here. We're actually gonna torque it. Just gonna get them in there. Finger tight to start. Okay, let's get some torque specs or at least find out if there is any really quickly. And then we'll send the oil pan back in. Seven foot pounds, is that what that said? I think it said seven. Seven put, put pounds, put pounds, foot pounds. Seven foot pounds for the filter and seven foot pounds for, for the oil pan. For all these bolts. That seems like a lot. There's one, there's two, three, and there's four. Okay, all right, so now, and of course I have yeeted my magnetic tray. Cross map. Oh my god, my eye is so itchy. Fuck, I'd rub my eye. <sighs> Eat this guy back in. And I go. I know it goes without saying, but make sure you wipe down the mating surfaces. And it would also help if these bolts would frickin' thread. There we go. Oh, and now the fun part. Getting all these frickin' bolts back in. I should probably try and get that crush washer off there as well, because that is still on there. There we go. I'm gonna put a new crush washer on. My camera ran out of space just as I was torquing down the oil pan. Seven foot pounds as well on all the oil pan bolts. Now we're gonna fill her up there, brothers. We're also gonna put a new crush washer on our drain plug. You could probably just do a new drain plug. They're probably cheap enough. I will also have a part for that linked in the description, but I'm gonna throw that on there as well just while I'm thinking about it, and then we'll slap this in when we're done filling it. I should probably double check that uh, one of these at least fits on that transmission before I go ahead and start filling everything up. So give me two seconds here. Oh yeah, that's fine. It's the uh, ATF-01 fits on there. Let's fill up the pump. Show you guys how to use this pump. If you decide to pick one up, get a new plastic container for it to sit in just in case it decides it's gonna leak. So I can at least catch the new fluid so I don't waste any. And of course this doesn't have one of the cool pour spouts that all the other Pentis and stuff has. So probably gonna be here a while. So we'll see you when we're done filling it. And yes, I did just free pour that entire three liters. All right, get you guys set back up to watch the fill real quick. I'm just gonna sit out from underneath and pump this guy up because I'm gonna need to fill it a couple times to get it where we need to be. So at this point, we are about eight-ish, a little bit more liters in. So we are now gonna go ahead and get under the car and we are gonna cap it temporarily just so we can get in, fire the car up, put it, make it level, get it to temperature. I'm just gonna pull the pump out. Is the hose leaking? There's like fluid all over the bottom of the hose. Oh yeah, it is. That's great. Let's get under here. Let's pull that 
that we will unscrew our fill tool. I'm just gonna let it get to a dribble here, just so we don't lose absolutely all the fluid. We're now back down to level. Now we're not gonna kill that washer right away because like I said, we do need to come back down here in a second. So I'm just gonna fire it up, get it up to temperature, check it with VCDS. Okay, I'm gonna hook up the VCDS cable here. You could also use OBD-11 and some other tools I'm sure can do it. All you gotta do is check the temperature of the transmission. Oh, I hate this every time. It's like, you in your face, not found. Dope. ATF temperature, already at 48. So I think we can shut it down just for now. We're gonna key back on for a second because I just need to double check, make sure that we need to do this with the engine off or the engine on. I can't remember. Stop yelling at me. My transmission is still a bit hot. It's gotta be between 35 and 45 engine off in park to, or I guess in park engine on to check the fluid level. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it through the gears just while it's up in a high temperature so I can just kind of sit and wait for it to cool down. So I'm gonna quickly fire it back on. And we're just gonna go into each gear just for a couple seconds. Back to neutral drive a couple seconds into sport mode we're gonna go back to reverse make sure that we get uh, as much fluid as we can in there neutral back to drive and we're gonna go to reverse one more time still sitting at 48 still a bit too hot i'm just gonna throw it back in park and shut it off and we're just gonna hang out wait for it to cool down a little bit one eternity later so we are just in range now so we're gonna go under quickly do the last bit check the fill level and hopefully call it a day It'll do this fast. But... Now, there's a lot of fluid coming out for the temperature that it's at. So for sure, eight and a half liters went in and, or at least into the pump, I should say. So you're gonna need to wait for it to cool down a lot and then we're gonna have to check it again. All right, so while we struggle to get the transmission to cool down because it is too warm, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the rear diff really quickly. This one's super simple. You're gonna need to go ahead and get yourself one of these bad boys if you don't have one. It's just like a little fluid pump thing that you can put into your bottles and pump the fluid in. I already have a little thing cut to the size of the bottle that we're gonna be using. And for fluid, like I said, I'll have everything linked in the description here. We're gonna need not exactly two liters of this guy, but we're gonna need two bottles of the G052145S2 for the rear diff. Um, and then we're gonna need well, technically we're only gonna need about like 1.2 liters and then the rest plus a little bit of a bottle of another thing of S2. And then we have our transfer case fluid as well. But we're gonna go ahead and bring this to the back along with a eight millimeter hex. So that would be this guy here, three eighths ratchet. And then we're also potentially not gonna be able to fit a ratchet in there. So you're gonna need some kind of leverage. So you're going to need a eight millimeter wrench to go on the end of your eight millimeter Allen socket. So naturally the first thing you're always gonna wanna do when you're doing any kind of a fill plug, drain plug kind of situation, we're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that we can actually get the uh, fill plug off. So I'm gonna need, actually I might be able to fit the ratchet up there. Let's see, give it a try. I don't think we'll be able to, but you never know. No, I don't think so. Okay, so we're gonna do the old double wrench method to, or sorry, the fill plug, not the drain plug. I'm gonna do the double wrench method here to crack this bad boy off. Just like that. I would also probably recommend getting new drain plugs. Um, if you're gonna go ahead and do this, I don't have new ones. I'm just gonna put new washers on them. I do have the washers. I don't think these are magnetic drain plugs or anything, so. Okay, let's get the bottom one out here. One out here. That one's a lot easier. Now my car is level. It is on all four wheels right now. It is important, obviously, to do this when the car is level. Now my car does have 140,000 kilometers on it, so that oil color isn't too bad, but it does seem a little bit underfilled for a vehicle that's still kind of warm. The amount that came out, that's a bit suspect if you ask me. We'll just let that do its thing for a little bit and then we'll come back and fill it up real fast. So we've let it drain. Gonna go ahead and slap our either new drain plug or new washer on old drain plug back in, depending on whatever you do. Wipe that guy down. Whoopsies. We'll come back 
over this with some brake clean afterwards or whatever cleaning agent you want to use. Snug the drain boy up. We'll get the torque specs here when we're done. And now we're going to go ahead and slam this bad boy in there. Now you could try and use a little spout thing and like kind of yeet it in there, but I don't think that's going to work too well. So we're just going to undo the top fully, which nice. This thing does not have one of the little things I have to pop out. So I don't have to get out from under the car. And we're going to go ahead and shove our little fill fella in here. Oh, and that is definitely overflowing. Now that I've got the thing in there, can you get under the car, please? For the love of Christ. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and shove just the tip in there, as I'm sure some of you are quite good at. And we're going to get to pumping. Now, like I said, this should take about uh, a liter and a half. Or sorry, 1.2. And we're going to get a little bit of dribbles because it's just going to fight me as we fill this. So don't worry about that. Thing to do without a lift, but it can be done. So we're doing it because we're poor. Thanks, Trudeau. Man, we're almost done the first bottle. So like I said, I did have a little bit of a uh, third bottle kicking around. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and fill this back up and use the rest of that really quickly before I crack open a whole new bottle. Ah, we've still got like 200 mils in here, but I can't, I can't reach it, mate. From this goddamn bottle. Okay, I gotta figure out a longer detachment on here. Oh, what the shit? Ow, fuck. I just kicked the jack with my bare foot. I believe I have solved my dilemma, but that's only gonna be as good as this works. So I have to be ultra uber duper careful here. And there we go. She is full, 1.2 liters. Just gonna let that drain out. And once we break that stream any second now, my camera's gonna run out of space. Eight years later, using the last little bit of storage that I have, we're gonna put the fill plug back in. And rear diff done. Let's move on to the center diff and, or sorry, the transfer case in the front diff. We're gonna do the transfer case, which is this bad boy right about here. This guy's super simple. Uh, we're not gonna need anything really fancy to do this one. You should just be able to do it with the spout of the, uh, the filler. Okay, I'm gonna get the drain pan and hopefully you guys are able to hear me over the fans that are down here because we are cooling the transmission down as I uh, said previously. Okay, so fill, drain. First things first, always the fill because we want to make sure that we can get in there to refill it because if we drain it and we can't get the fill plug out, well then guess what, we're kind of screwed, aren't we? So nothing should come out of the fill, but depending on the temperature of it, some things still might. So let's see, nothing, nice and dry. Now let's do the drain. Oh yeah, she's dark, hey? Yeah, most definitely time to be serviced. Now, not a lot of fluid's gonna come out of the transfer case. It only takes about 800 mils, I believe. And we're gonna go grab a rag just while we let that drain. Throw our drain plug back in. And go ahead and snug it up. So, transfer case fluid going in. And there we go. Cool. Simple as that. Let it drain out to a dribble. It's probably about good there. And there's the transfer case. That one was fast. Very simple. Lots of space down here to do stuff. And I will come back under here and clean this all up properly once I'm done with the trans. Okay, and after ugh, eight millennium of uh, waiting for my transmission to cool down, I think we are about to ready to do it. Fan behind me so you guys can hopefully hear me. So there goes our fluid. And I did drop the washer in there, so I'm probably just gonna put a new one on, no big deal. But I'm gonna let this go until we're at a dribble. I'm gonna go grab a new washer in the meantime. And we are still going. What the hell? That's like a liter out already. Well, apparently my camera ran out of space and I didn't know, but we're done. We got it down to the dribbles, torqued it. I'm gonna clean everything up and then we're gonna move on to the front diff now. And then we'll be done and ready to go wheeling again. This one's pretty simple. It's only about a liter of fluid that's gonna be used. So you're gonna need eight millimeter Allen to get the fill and the drain plugs out. And same rule applies for the front as well as the rear. You're gonna take your fill out first. And we're actually gonna need 
a wrench to go on the end of our Allen here. And this one is a bit tight. There we go. Likely nothing's gonna come out of the, the fill, but you never know. All right, so now let's hit the drain. And the fill was up here, just kind of in front of the, the engine mount cross brace or whatever you wanna call it. And then the drain is right on the bottom. They're the only two eight mils on the pumpkin in the front anyways. So it's kind of hard to do the wrong one. There we go. Give that a couple minutes to drain and then we'll come back. And now that it's drained for a couple minutes, we don't really have anything coming out. We plug up the bottom, use new bolts or drain plugs if you want. I would recommend doing it if you uh, can get your hands on them and you want to spend the extra couple bucks. Okay, drain is snugged up. Now it's filled up. Almost there. There we go. Let the excess drip. And the car isn't lifted up right now. It's on all fours. Here we go. Snugged up by hand. I'm gonna get everything out of here. There we go. Snugged. And I'm gonna give everything a quick wipe down. And there we go. All three jobs, or I guess all four jobs done. We're gonna put the belly pan and everything back on and we'll wrap it up. All right, so there we go. Another Q7 maintenance item done. We're fully ready to rock and roll with some wheeling. We've got our lift and everything in now. We've got the roof rack. We have a rooftop tent. We're gonna talk about our entire overlanding setup in another video. But thank you guys. Let me know if there's anything else as in terms of maintenance items or stuff you want me to go over for the three liter TDI platform, including like anything to do with the drivetrain or whatever. But this install shouldn't take you guys more than maybe two or three hours to do. Very worthwhile to do it. It's gonna help your drivetrain long-term. These are technically a Volkswagen lifetime service item. So this fluid is probably gonna be nice and dark when you go ahead and take it out. So definitely do it and give your drivetrain some nice needed relief. But thank you guys once again for checking out today's video. If you are new here, do not forget to subscribe to watch more of the Overland Q7 build. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, peace out. I will see you in the next video.